Ladies and gents, welcome to GVX and this is your time machine broke at the worst time in history. Watch on Kuzgazad Nutshell. Yes, new Kuzgazad video. I guess it's about time machine. Uh, I, I don't know what the topic going to be about. I guess he's going to go theoretical journey on what happens if your time machine breaks at a, some fucked up dinosaur, dinosaur extinct. I don't, I don't know what's going to happen. But it's Kuzgazad video, so it's going to be awesome. Let's do it. Remember, if you like my reaction, don't forget to like and subscribe so I know which type of videos to react to more. I like watching because of that videos, obviously, scientific related things, right? Whether it's like established science or like based on science, it's always fun, right? So let's waste one. Your time machine broke and you're stuck in the worst time in history. It feels like you stepped into an oven. There are no plants or any vegetation and almost no moisture in the air. The sunlight smashing down from the cloudless and weirdly colored sky is reflected by an endless sea of red and orange sand dunes stretching over the horizon for thousands of kilometers. Dust devils the size of buildings dance over the hellish landscape. You're in the early Triassic, hothouse Earth 250 million years ago, a few million years after the worst mass extinction in history. The planet is still suffering from a permanent fever. Volcanism and the runaway greenhouse effect has transformed the planet into hell. There's three to five times more CO2 in the air than in the human era. The formation of the massive supercontinent Pangaea led to the... Would you survive that though with all that kind of harsh condition, higher CO2, right? Nowadays, like, we have, like, a few degrees of, like, a temperature change and we're like, what the fuck? People nearly have a stroke. So, yeah, we are a very fragile in a way. Much is desert in history that barely sees any rain. The gigantic ocean is warm, even deep below. Two superheated currents circulate around the globe, pumping extreme amounts of heat and moisture into the atmosphere. There's no ice, even at the poles. Seems like you're stuck in the center of the desert, isolated by endless ancient land masses. One of the most hostile environments Earth has ever produced. The deserts we know are still full of life, but not this one. Its core is starved of moisture and the air is bone dry. Your skin dries out immediately. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Could you imagine that shit? No moisture, no Vaseline. Dry as fuck. Everything starts to like, you know, like tingle. During the COVID time, like I was like washing so much that I actually went through a phase where everything, my skin was literally flaking and drying because chemicals do that shit. And yeah, that thing itches as fuck. It's just like horrible. And your lips begin to crack. The CO2 rich air is easily 50 degrees Celsius and sears your lungs with every labored breath. The rubber soles of your boots begin to melt. If you touch the ground, you'll get burns. Your sweat evaporates before it could cool you and your exposed skin begins to crack within minutes. Suddenly, it becomes even hotter as a red sandstorm envelops the landscape. Like thousands of tiny sparks, burning hot sand hits your skin. You're pressing your machine's buttons at random. Take any pointy thing and you know, yeah, that's, that's going to be better if, that's, if you're stranded here. Because this, I thought moisture and the heat is the killer. If you've been to India, uh, and especially certain places of India, you realize like, okay, temperature is not the fucked up part, it's the moisture. Because yeah, other places with 40 degrees Celsius, yeah, okay, maybe I can sort of that. 40 degrees Celsius with like was 70% moisture. That shit is insane. That kills you nearly. For opposite of that, literally no moisture. Yeah, that kills you as well. Like, that's insane. Random. It can't do time travel, but it can still move. You shoot over some of the mightiest mountains Earth has ever seen. Eventually, you stop at the shores of the Tethys Sea. The vast shallow ocean looks more like a swamp among scattered groups of waist-high ferns and spindly stems with tufted foliage. A few Lystrosaurus feeding on them eye you curiously. The water is murky and looks sickly and milky. Colorful mats of bacteria float on the surface like oil slicks. The air is hot and humid like a steam room. It's hard to breathe and your sweat can't evaporate and cool you. Even the water can't give you any relief. It's as hot as a freshly run bathtub. This hot ocean can't hold much oxygen, especially in deeper layers. 
Bacteria and bivalves are the only species that thrive here. The waves move almost sluggishly through the... Okay, so it's called the history. How did humanity survive, right? Because you know about like how contaminated most lakes are. Before the modern era, people used to rely on lakes and just like drink water directly from the lakes. Now it is like the level of parasites that are in lakes, right? Uh, I'm guessing like typhoid and cholera type of, uh, you know, th uh, j jumps and there's a lot of shit there, right? So, you know, like, okay, if you drink from the lake, you're probably going to get sick and you will get sick. That's how bad it is. Then again, like back then, people used to have like this kind of like immunity because they used to drink from the lake. We probably don't have that anymore, at least at that level. But still, uh, nature is like intense, right? Yeah, people if get stranded, like, what is that show? I forgot, like, he goes to wild and like bear grills type of shit, right? If, if, we, if it actually happens to us, we're probably gonna die of some kind of disease, let's be honest. This thick bacterial soup, when they break, they leave behind a glistening iridescent film. Each one the shore releases a mist that makes your eyes and throat burn carrying the rotten egg stench of hydrogen sulfide up from the oxygen-starved depths. Barely conscious from the heat and smell and CO2, you look at the horizon. A storm is building unlike any you've ever seen. The hot ocean feeds it endless energy, and with no continents to slow it down, it will dwarf the fiercest hurricanes of your time. You're doomed. Your broken time machine jolts and screeches. Something's happening. Timeline now. You're near the equator in the late Carboniferous, 320 million years ago. The atmosphere is thick with moisture. The climate is locked in a never ending wet super summer without any other seasons. Colliding continents are covered by the largest swamps the planet will ever see. A paradise for plants growing faster than their dead biomass can decompose. The ground beneath is a warm, soggy mass of decaying vegetation. What will be an endless desert in 70 million years is now an endless alien jungle. A huge variety of life is thriving in this period. From your perspective, this is not that great. You're lost in a maze of giant tree-like plants towering over a twisted undergrowth of giant ferns and endless varieties of bizarre and unfamiliar vegetation. The thick, humid air smells of sweet decay, but breathing makes you dizzy. Your vision seems too sharp, your thoughts slightly frantic. The dense plant cover has supercharged the atmosphere with oxygen, 60% higher than in the human era, and your body is trying to cope. Which is great for the dominant land animals, which have conquered every niche of this majestic garden. Bugs. You're stuck in the golden age of arthropods. In this oxygen-rich world, they have evolved to sizes that will never be possible again. They are innumerable and everywhere. Armored cat-sized megarachne crash through the undergrowth, hunting a swarm of panicked roachoids that scatter in all directions. Above you, a griffin fly with wings spanning nearly a meter and beating like helicopter blades catches a paleodictyoptera mid-flight. You stumble through the bushes filled with countless crawling creatures as an arthropleura the length of a car picks its way through the ferns, moving countless legs in hypnotic waves. You reach a swampy clearing and stumble into the shallow water, dizzy and terrified as a pulmon scorpius rips apart its prey, eyeing you with some interest. Here in, the, here in the clearing, you can see the sky above the canopy glow shrieking red, intensifying at an alarming pace. The extreme humidity here creates sudden, violent thunderstorms, and the oxygen-rich atmosphere makes everything dangerously flammable. Even the wet vegetation can burst into explosive flame with the slightest spark. Why do all of your trips end that in is a... insane, right? Like during this time, the, the level of oxygen, how did everything didn't burn through? How was that at that level of vegetation in the first place? It would just like burn through everything. A stall. Well, at least it will take all the creatures that want to eat you with it. Your broken time machine jolts back to life. The world is folding in on itself. You've woken up in the early Devonian, 400 million years ago. M most of the planet is covered in shallow seas, while the land is mostly rocky plains and mountains broken by braided rivers and mudflats. 
Earth is in a state of transition. For about 100 million years, life has begun to break down rocks into soil, a soft layer that enables plants to grow and life thrive. The ozone layer is slowly building up, fed by organisms releasing gases. Recently, this process has been speeding up. The land is turning from toxic to semi-habitable. The sky looks wrong somehow. The sun blazes harsh and white, barely filtered by the unfamiliar atmosphere. The air feels thin with only 15% oxygen compared to today's 21. Each breath feels shallow and unsatisfying. You're on the verge of passing out and can only move slowly. At least it's currently moderately warm and not stormy. But it's what dominates these lands that makes this world truly alien. Reaching up to eight. Obviously, in here, the point is like this human is like, let's just say, can survive this. That's assumption here because no way in hell that's reality. If this actually happened, you'd be dead long before. The level of temperature changes and the atmosphere changes, plays havoc on your like immune system. You will get sick with something, some kind of germs or virus. It will pass through your immune system. Nowadays, if you're like, like even like a five or 10 degrees of like temperature change, you'll have cold. That's how easy it is. You'll just have cold. So yeah, that's insane. Eight meters into the sky, a massive obelisks of fungal prototaxites. As you walk closer, you notice spores catching the sunlight, drifting through the air like tiny stars. Your movement disturbs more of them, creating clouds suspended in the thin atmosphere. They coat your skin with a fine, powdery, itchy film. You try not to think about how many you're inhaling with every breath in this oxygen-poor air. The ground feels nothing like soil. It's mostly rock partly covered by a thin, slightly springy layer of decomposing matter. Some shallow water pools reflect the pale alien sky above. Between the fungal towers, there's a carpet of smaller fungi and a few alien-like primitive plants. No flowers, no leaves, just strange green stalks and fern-like structures that reach your ankles. Around you, the fungal towers rise like pale pillars. Their surface is neither smooth nor rough, but something in between. They're neither wet nor dry, slightly yielding under your touch. Small patches of what might be lichen create splashes of muted greens and yellows on their surfaces. The only animal... I'm the only one who starts to feel itchy as the more he describes all this. Like, Why am I getting creeped out? I don't like bugs, man. ...you can spot are a few insects burrowing into the large mushrooms. Everything is eerily quiet. You sit down on a rock. Is this it? As the night approaches, the pale sky shifts into sickly purples and greys, bleeding into the darkness. No animal sounds announce the coming night, just the solemn whisper of the prototaxites creaking in the wind. Through the thin atmosphere, the stars and the Milky Way illuminate the scenery with unsettling clarity. The fungal towers loom as pale shapes against the starlit sky, their silhouettes seeming even more wrong in the darkness. You are utterly alone, a time traveler lost in an alien world. Your time machine sputters. What now? Back to home. Time to start rebuilding civilization. And while a hammer and saw would come in handy, the single most important tool you'll need. Yeah, well, go to brilliant.org for such nutshell and support this channel. This is a good deep, deep dive on, like, what would happen if you, like, drop to some other timeline. Implying you survive, which is, like, you probably 100% won't. Like, yeah, I don't believe it. That's how fragile we humans are. But, yeah, this was really interesting, isn't it? Yeah, the, you know, the, when the oxygen was so high, like, that level of bugs, first of all, that would kill me just because of, like, panic. Not to mention, like, yeah, the f things would be so flammable, that high level of oxygen. Like it would take a toll on your like brain and oral health. Yeah, this is just oral insane. Alright, well, that was your time machine broke at the worst time in history, but because of that nutshell. If you like my next channel for like, subscribe and I'll see you next time.